Discord is a really, really handy tool for a lot of game developers, both from a marketing perspective as well as a community building perspective. So hopefully we can get you set up pretty easily. Jumping right into it. First thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna come to your project file and you're gonna wanna actually make sure that you have a plugins folder. If you don't, go ahead and create one. That's all you gotta do as far as this goes. Now, what you're gonna wanna actually do um, to get set up is there are two different links that are gonna be in the description down below. That is going to be the Discord developer portal. This is where you're gonna actually set up your application that will tell Discord what game players are playing. And then you've also got your Discord game sample project here. Now, this is created by a gentleman called Sys. It is under an MIT license, so you can use it for commercial use and such. Um, but what you're going to want to go ahead and do is actually download this. This includes a couple things. An example of that is it has a, um, sorry, an example Discord game subsystem, which we're going to use to kind of show how to set up the early system. So go ahead and download that by clicking here and then clicking download zip. Once you have that installed, you can come over to the applications. You'll hit new application, enter in the name of whatever game you're playing, as well as selecting um, whether it's a personal solo or if you have any kind of team set up, you can select the team there. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and go into here. Inside of here, you're gonna see something called an application ID. That is the important part. That's the part we're gonna need for our Discord setup. Um, then as well over here, you can also add some art assets that you'd like. Um, we're going to show how to reference these later. But essentially, as long as they're in here um, with the name, you can access them through that name. So let's go ahead and open up the project here. First thing you want to do is once you have the GitHub link downloaded, um, inside of there, you should see something labeled as Discord game. Uh, it'll be under plugin forward slash Discord game. If you open up that file, grab the Discord game file itself, and you drag that into your plugins file on your project folder. From here, you'll see you have a U plugin as well as some resources. Um, these are really cool things you want to look over. Um, the only really important thing, though, that you need to be aware of from this is inside of source, there is something called third party. This contains the Discord game SDK. What you want to do is check and make sure that the current version of the SDK, which it currently is, um, it matches the version in the GitHub repository. So right now the GitHub repository version is 3.2.1. Um, so as long as you go to the developer portal and those match, then you should be good to go. Uh, but if they're different, then you can go ahead and just download the Lotus SDK and then put it inside of these files um, in the correct ones. Um, and then you should be good to go. Once you have this in here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and open up your project uh, SLN, your solution. Um, if you don't have one, so you haven't set up your project as C++ and Blueprint, you're gonna to have to make sure you set that up. Um, you have to do a different video for that, but make sure to come back here when you're done. Um, and then what you're gonna to wanna to do is inside of here, that plugin, make sure you go to the discord game.h. There's a bit of an issue with the current um, open source plugin in that it doesn't include these include files. Um, if you don't include these, you can't package the game for players. Um, so if you want to make sure that you can package this going forward in the future, just make sure to include these two things right here. So you just got to include uh, HAL forward slash platform process and then MISC forward slash paths. So long as you include those in here, then it'll build just fine. Once you've got those in there, you though, you can go ahead and close those two files. And then what we're going to do is before we go mess around with our Discord subsystem, you want to launch the engine. And then from within here, you have a C++ class. And you want to go in here and create a new one based on that Discord subsystem. In theory, if you know what you're doing, you can also, if you're, especially if you're using Writer or something, you can create it actually just directly in the IDE. But I usually recommend people do it this way because especially if you don't know what fully what you're doing, this sets up a lot of the default stuff for you off the bat. But you'll select this Discord game subsystem and you'll you'll go through and create a C++ class. I've already gone ahead and done that. Um, when you do that, though, it's going to set you up with like a blank class, which is like basically just this part right here and then like a U class header. Uh, and then usually your generated includes. Um, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you go in here um, and actually add these 
um, functional, this functionality here. Um, so this is part of that example project I was talking about earlier. So you can copy paste directly from there. If not, you know, you can pause the video here and, and type all this stuff out. The only things in here that are not actually part of the example is the F date time game start and this U function down here that I've created. I'll explain why I created those in a little bit, but uh, just, just so you understand, I created those myself. So once you have this all set up and um, inside of here, you're gonna wanna go into your C++ and um, actually go into the constructor and make sure to set the client ID to that client ID you saw earlier inside of Discord's application manager. So essentially in, in Discord, it's called application ID, but in here we call it a client ID. Um, and so once you've set that, then you can come down here and this update activity, um, the default one that comes with the um, plugin is um, all hard coded in. Uh, I removed most of the stuff because I don't actually need it myself. And so what I did is the timestamps, um, originally they were hard coded to just get the current timestamp. Uh, anytime you updated the activity, I wasn't a big fan of that. So I just set a variable called game start to the UTC now when the, this starts up when the engine very first starts. So once that happens, it basically just calls out to this and saves that so that if you update the activity, you can just reference this game start and that way you'll always keep the timer at an accurate counting rather than, you know, resetting it every time you update the activities. Um, and then here's the assets we talked about earlier. So remember how I mentioned the names you can use to reference? That's all you do here is for these assets, you can set the large image and you basically just give it the name of that large image as it is in Discord. So you see how that's be back. Um, that's what it's called in here as well. They have to match or else it won't be able to pull the correct answer. Now, um, let's look at my custom one I created here. What this is, is this function actually allows me to within um, Unreal Engine, actually within the Blueprint graphs, to actually call this functionality. So it says Blueprint Callable. So I update Discord activity and I pass in a details, a state, a large image name, large text, small image name, and small text. Now you don't have to use all of these. If you leave them blank, Discord will just not use them. Um, so that's the cool thing about this. And so what you wanna do is you wanna come in here and you wanna make sure you have this if Discord is running. Um, I, it's also as part of the default um, project version, but the reason why you want this is if, if you do not call this, if you do not do if is Discord running, um, and Discord is not running while you call this activity, um, it will crash your game. It will just straight up crash your game and just not work because Discord has to be running to call out to Discord. So just make sure you add this. It's just a one way to make sure your game actually can talk to Discord. Um, once you're in here, you basically create a local variable version of activity. You set up all of the different variables here. So for example, I set the application ID, I set the type, I set the supported platforms. Um, then I do the timestamp. Now, the cool thing is since we're doing the timestamp that we set when we very first launched the engine, all we're doing is calling to that variable, which already has a timestamp in it, and just saying, hey, what's our current Unix timestamp version of this? And so it'll go, okay, yeah, you start playing the game at six o'clock. You know, maybe it's seven o'clock when the update activity got called, and it goes, oh yeah, six o'clock's when you start playing. And so the timer will actually still stay accurate um, despite updating the activity. Then in here, to set the activity state and details, um, and what we have to do is Unreal Engine doesn't like conch chars inside of params. And so what we're passing in is F strings, and then we're converting those F strings with string casts back to conch chars. And so by doing this, this means that Discord likes um, what it receives and Unreal Engine likes the params. And um, once we have those activity details set, this is the actual activities you see inside of Discord. So let me actually just bring up Discord here so I can show you. So let's take a moment to load. Normally I have it up and running all the time, but sometimes, you know, if I'm busy, I've got things I'm doing. Now I did just start up Discord, so it wasn't started originally. So you'll see here the timer is reset, even though the engine's been running in the background this whole time. Um, that's just what happens. So whenever you start up Discord, this checks, I think it's like every five seconds, uh, just to see if Discord's running. If it's not, it will, you know, just carry on. But if it then goes, oh, hey, now it's running, then it'll start. But as you can see here, um, and the default one, I just get the B-Bag and then Starlight Brigade, so it's all very simple. But inside of here, you know, I can pass in anything I want. Um, and then what it does is this Discord core, 
actually calls the activity local variable here and passes in um, it back to the Discord core. So basically, it you you set all the variable options here, including the asset ones that you have here. And then once you're done, you pass that back into Discord. And that's when Discord actually updates everything and goes, you're, you're basically, if anyone, if you know about APIs, it's 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 kind of like a, a, a payload where you're sending the whole message to Discord all at once as a payload. But let's go ahead and open up this. And to kind of give you an example of some cool things you can do with this, I have some editor utilities here. Now, as you can see, this kind of shows just Starlight Brigade blank, but it doesn't actually have a, a status or a state or anything with that. Well, if we take a look at my editor utils here, I have set it to say I'm developing Starlight Brigade and then give it the image name we back and the large text Starlight Brigade. So if I go ahead and just run this utility, now, as you can see, just drag this back out here, I have developing Starlight Brigade. Now, let's say, you know, maybe maybe my players are playing the game. So, of course, I want them to show something. Um, so, let me pause this. And so, the cool thing is, on the instance here, at the main menu, I call this. But then, in the level blueprints, I actually call based on whether or not... Um, in fact, we can actually open it and show it here. Uh, depending on what game mode they're playing, I show different messages. So, if we open up this here, now that we're playing a um, game mode, we actually have the um, details here. We're simulating enemy fleets and the state of annihilation. And of course, you can pass in anything you want here. You can put whatever text you want. Uh, this is just what I've chosen to show here. Um, but yeah, so this just comes off the Discord game subsystem. So that C++ class we created. Um, so any additional functionality you want to create that actually will be, you know, used in that subsystem, um, you just pull out of the direct game subsystem. Um, but yeah, that should be pretty much everything. Um, the only other things you need to make sure that you have is inside of your um, build file here, make sure to include that plugin. If you don't, it won't, it won't uh, build, build correctly. Um, but yeah, that should be pretty much everything. If you have any questions or stuck on anything, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Um, you can also reach out to me on Discord. I'm much more active on there. Uh, but otherwise, good luck and good hunting.